Welcome everyone. Today I am doing something very different. I am going to be reacting to the first episode of the last arc of Clone Wars season seven. Y'all, you have no idea how long it took me to actually say that. I have been told to record my reaction, which makes me very suspicious, but also quite nervous and very suspicious. I'm a major Thrawn fan, Star Wars Rebels fan. Y'all know where my mind is going, if you know who I am, but I'm trying not to get that high of expectations, which I don't think it is, but it could be. Specifically what I'm referring to is Echoes of Thrawn Alliances, that book, which is probably somewhere back there. Anyway, there was a section of Thrawn Alliances that took place in the Clone Wars era where Anakin and Thrawn worked together to save Padme, but I, with it being the last arc, I don't think we'll see that. But there might be echoes of the it. The Clone Wars era and then up through to episode four is one of my most favorite times of Star Wars to read about and learn about in canon. There's so much going on, um, which makes me excited for the Cassian Andor series as well. But anyway, I am recording my reaction and we'll see how this goes. No, I don't want to skip the intro. <gasps> it's different music. I'm already freaking out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my coffee, part one. This is different. In response to this overwhelming attack, the Jedi <laughs> Council has disappeared. Oh, that's like from the... That's from the teaser, like, reveal. <gasps> dude. Oh, dude, that's so cool. Oh, <laughs> oh. That makes me sad about what Cody. <laughs> well, I can see things are going splendidly. But he's having a Luke moment on crate. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. Seriously. Come to surrender. Surrender? That's a relief. Notify the <laughs> tactical droid. Atu, how much longer are we stuck down here? So cool. <sighs> the shots are just beautiful. You may join the fun as well. Yes. <laughs> Such a cool shot. Your state of helplessness really sold him on my surrender talk. <laughs> Always glad to help, my friend. Oh, it's gonna make me cry. My Go friend. What is it, Admiral? Sir, we've received a transmission from someone using our subspace frequency. Fulcrum. Sort of error. Perhaps the siege at Ongaron has taken a turn for the worse. No, sir. I'm gonna freak out. I'm gonna freak out. All right, Admiral. Okay, this is so familiar. You brought us all the way back here. So wait, does Bo-Katan know about Fulcrum? Hello, Master. <sighs> huh? I freaked out at the Fulcrum. Soka hadn't left the order, then she wouldn't have been where she needed to be. That's one way to look at it, I suppose. It's the only way to look at it. We're gonna capture Maul. All is Finally. as the Force wheels it. I thought you would be more excited about this. Oh, y'all, this is so good. R2 ran up to her. Give Ahsoka a hug, unlike Thrawn did to Eli. I'm so glad. We'll have to catch up another time. Things are moving quickly. Every minute we waste. <laughs> give. Ahsoka is the one giving the cold shoulder. Holy crap! Poor Anakin. I thought she meant something to you. Oh crap. She did. 
and still does. But I cannot allow my feelings to cloud my judgment. The Council will decide what our course of action will be. Oh, no. I told you this was a waste of time. So, that went well, all things considered. You two oh. certainly haven't changed. <laughs> Is that a bad thing? Come on. I have a surprise for you. It reminds me of Fallen Order, the ship. Commander. The flashback scene with the clones giving him high fives and fist bumps. Oh, which is going to break my heart even more. Oh, crap. As soon as Rex and the guys knew you were back, they got to work. <laughs> I was going to say that was kind of fast to paint those helmets. But you don't have to call me Commander anymore. Sure thing, Commander. Oh, <laughs> I have one more surprise for you. Rebels call back. Hmm. No, it's Coruscant. Grievous has attacked the capital. What about the Chancellor? Shock T has been sent to protect him, but Master Windu has lost contact with her. Not to worry. Our fleet can be there within the hour. So that's it? You're going to abandon bo and her people? Right now, people on Coruscant need us. No. The Chancellor needs you. That's not fair. We'll promote Rex to commander and have him lead the new division. Ahsoka can go with him as an advisor. He doesn't seem to stay dead. <laughs> Thanks for the support. Maybe a little better. <laughs> Hmm. That's the last time they saw each other, isn't it? <laughs> I'm fine with that. Why do I feel like this is like this feels like Dragon Age to me? I love it. You're nothing. I don't know. Your time has come. Ursa, can you confirm the target's location? Ursa. I can only confirm. Oh boy. It's like the Normandy invasion. Oh my gosh, be careful. It just blew up. <laughs> Oh, there's the poster. I love how her lightsaber is light. Like the just like the light and the effects around them. Yeah. Some things never change. Uh. Oh, don't bring Han Solo into this. Uh. This is creepy. Hold me. Oh, please don't end here. Oh, dude. Chills. I get scared very easily. I was reading a book the other day that freaked me out. <gasps> oh no! Oh sure, just leave her. Crap. <gasps> Oh, they're all gonna die. 
Oh no. <sighs> oh crap. Now you can't end it like that. That's not fair. <laughs> Dang it. No, I want to watch the credits. Ah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why does it have to end right there? Dang it. <laughs> that was so good. That was good. I bet because of the fulcrum thing that that's why um, I was told to record myself. Oh my gosh, but that was so good. That, oh. I mean, it's been a while since I've watched the other episodes, but I, I don't think I'd be quite wrong in saying that that's probably the best Clone Wars episode um, so far. I mean, I, that was so good. That was like a movie. Gosh, I want that to continue. <laughs> this was pretty early for the fulcrum symbol, or fulcrum... Uh, for the fulcrum uh, frequency to be used because in the Ahsoka book Order 66 has already happened and Ilum is already being mined for the kyber crystals and also being turned into a Starkiller base because we see that happening in Jedi Fallen Order <sighs> It's been a while since I've read that book, but from what I remember, it was in that book that she was meeting with Bail Organa, and then that's how she got, like, initiated into the Fulcrum program. Oh. But maybe she didn't think it still existed. I need to read Ahsoka again. Oh, that's... Mm. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's Yularen. Yularen knew about the fulcrum subspace frequency. Yularen knew that Ahsoka was fulcrum. I'm laughing at my... I'm laughing at myself because I... Like, I'm, my brain is going a million miles a minute. Okay, hold up. Let's listen to this again. He thought it was Saul Guerrera. He thought it was Saul Guerrero. Isn't that kind of bad that Saul Guerrero has the fulcrum subspace frequency? Maybe that's how he hacked into Yavin base, you know, during Rebels when he had the big hologram. In so this is interesting. <laughs> we have Saul Guerrero, who was considered a partisan up to Rogue One, a splinter group of people fighting against what the Empire was. And then we have Yalaren, who was an admiral of the Republic, but then became an officer of the Empire as an ISB agent. So I have a theory, and I'm actually working on this video right now. It's almost ready to go. I just don't know if I want like certain graphics or not, but I always thought that... <laughs> that Thrawn was uh, planning a, like, Valkyrie operation, Operation Valkyrie type thing with the Empire, where he was going behind the Empire's back um, in order to take it down from within because of his conversation with Night Swan in the first Thrawn book, where he says that Emperor Palpatine will not live forever. And uh, basically when he's gone, um, 
uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn would have been in a position to influence the choice of a new leader. And um, Night Swan was, said something to the effect of, and you think that that leader will bring light into the darkness of this galaxy or something to, like that. And Thrawn says, there's hope that he will. Um, so Thrawn, in my mind, was playing a long game in order to take the Empire down from within and Palpatine himself down from within. Um, but I guess since we learn in The Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine is probably the Eternal Emperor, um, perhaps similar or the same as Emperor Valkorion from Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, where he's able to es essence transfer between different um, beings and stuff. And so Rise of Skywalker, we learn that it's a clone of himself, that he transferred his essence, and that's why he survived, blah, 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 blah. So Thrawn didn't foresee that, I suppose. Anyway, this is playing into my theory that uh, Thrawn had some sort of Operation Valkyrie in hand because it's my thinking that Thrawn would trust that information to Yalaren. And in particular, the reason why I'm kind of not backed up, but it's an ancillary scene that provides the, the tapestry that this could be possible. <laughs> um, there was a scene in Star Wars Rebels, I believe it's season three. It was a scene where Grand Admiral Thrawn had Hera's Calcori in his hand and he was in the corner um, admiring it and looking at it and what I think is a force thing happening. That's a whole nother theory. And then Yalaren, I think he was looking at his data pad or something, but he was sitting in a chair right before Grand Admiral Thrawn's desk, but they were studying stuff and working together. But then Governor Price walks in and then they kind of, their like demeanor shifts. Yalaren is who I think he would trust with some sort of Valkyrie plan. And, you know, just here he knew about Fulcrum, at least the existence of it. He obviously didn't know that Callus was Fulcrum because he was super surprised. One more time, one more time, sure. one more time, because this is my favorite part of the episode. Interesting. Oh, and the, okay, so no, this goes further in to me thinking about um, Jedi Fallen Order, because we see Saw Gerrera. This is after the Empire, or the Empire, like, was born from the Republic. I wonder if Saw still had that subspace frequency. I mean, it must have changed interesting if it didn't though and if Yalaren was kind of working from within as well my brain is exploding right now so let me just preface a little bit Thrawn says to Hera in Rebels I study the art of war work to perfect it he also says to defeat your enemy you must know them and Ahsoka says this as well to defeat your enemy you must know them Remember, Thrawn said, I study the art of war, work to perfect it. There's a, a book called The Art of War. The Art of War says, to defeat an enemy, you must know them, basically. And then it says, to know your enemy, you must become your enemy. So Thrawn became a Grand Admiral of the Empire. I think Yalorin kind of did the same there, too. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. So Yalorin became a colonel of the ISB, and if he still had that fulcrum frequency. So Thrawn, I believe, would have trusted Yalaren. He put Faro, Commodore Karen Faro, in place on purpose to be a Grand Admiral of the 11th Fleet, because then he would be in charge of the 7th Fleet. And then he had Eli over off into the Chiss space to coordinate and to have a connection there. Well, Ronan, he got Ronan out of the place because Ronan would have messed stuff up in terms of outing Thrawn, like, you know, helping the Chiss Jedi as Ronan um, assumed. Which makes me nervous for Ronan being over there. Oh my gosh, I am going crazy. I think Yalarn was talking to the Rebellion. This was such a good episode, you guys. Um, my speculations of Thrawn still somehow made it into this episode because everything revolves around Thrawn in Star Wars, um, always and forever. Um, I loved Obi-Wan's characterization in this. 
just... <sighs> he obviously, obviously loved and still does love yes. Satine. Oh my gosh. And I love seeing uh, Katie back as um, Bo-Katan. I hope we see more of her. And I really, 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 really hope we see her in The Mandalorian. Um, my gosh. There's so many characters. So many characters I want to see in The Mandalorian. Um, but anyway, I've almost been recording for like an hour. Um, overall, I loved this video. And um, I just... I, I'm 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 literally I, I'm losing my mind and I gotta I gotta make a call after this <laughs> because I got too many theories to make other people crazy with. Hope you enjoyed my my reaction. Many 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 hugs from me to you, um, and I will see you all next time. <laughs> Bye. There are evil things in this galaxy, Night Swan. Far more evil than the Empire, and far more dangerous to all living beings. We needed to know whether the Empire that was rising from the ashes of the Clone War could be an ally against them, or whether it should instead be collapsed into an easy prey. You understand now my scenario.